some of you in the US will already have one of these things. Well, not necessarily exactly the same, but it's a contactless credit card. Now, how do these work? It's pretty simple. You have a reader, which normally is attached to the till, and the till sends to the reader what it is that you want to charge the customer. Alternatively, they normally have a keypad on that you can manually input this charge. And then what happens is the reader puts out a radio frequency signal. It's usually quite low frequency, like 125, 150 kilohertz, something like that. And if the card is within range of the reader, and this is the point, it needs to be like here, about a centimetre away or closer, then the reader is giving it enough power for the card to actually store the energy and to power up its onboard chip. And what happens then is the card actually sends a signal. Now how does it do this? It does this not by transmitting anything. What it does is it sucks extra power out of the radio frequency field and the reader is all the time looking at its own field. So it sees this little string of blips and it knows that's data and it reads that information the card has sent which might be, hi I'm a Visa card or hi I'm a MasterCard or whatever. Then the actual reader sends a challenge which is an encrypted uh, stream of bits for the card, which is done to verify the card is authentic. The card replies with a different encoded stream of bits based on the ones that it's been sent. And then the reader is happy that the card is a real card. The actual card is happy that the point of sale terminal is a real point of sale terminal. And uh, the reader sends please to take off twelve dollars or six pounds fifty or whatever the case may be from this person's balance the card checks that that's within its limits because there is a daily limit it's usually thirty pounds you can get it set lower or probably fifty dollars in the states you can get it set lower if you want to contact your bank and do that and if it's within the daily limit, then the card says, yes, okay, I'm doing that, and here is your contact information. And what it does is it sends back what the bank needs as an authorization number to actually make the debit. And that goes into your reader. Your reader then contacts the bank, and the money gets transferred from their account to yours. And that's the way it all works. Um, now, people are going around committing fraud here in the UK because there's an awful lot of contactless cards around here, especially in London where I am, where public transport is now contactless only. So nearly everyone's got one, maybe two contactless cards in their wallet. And what unscrupulous people are doing is they're coming along with a reader, tickety tickety tick, they put in whatever they want to charge, they brush it against your card, while it's still in your pocket, in your wallet, because a lot of readers can read, as I said, that one centimetre difference. If you keep your card in your in your wallet, then you'll screw. And uh, so the money gets debited. If it's a small amount of money, you may not even notice. In fact, you probably won't. Now, there is an obvious problem with this, as far as the crook is concerned, and that is that somewhere there is a piece of information that ties all of these payments through a card reader to their bank account. But not all crooks are just ordinary people. Some crooks are businessmen. And in fact I was talking in a pub miles and miles away from here to a guy who was well in his cups. And we were talking and I told him I was an electronics engineer and he said yeah, he used to be one too, and we had similar experiences about there not being enough industry currently in the UK to employ us. And uh, he, sa he said, 
but I'm putting my electronic skills to good use. And I'm like, well, what's that? And he explained exactly what it is he had done. Now, he owns the news agent. The news agent itself doesn't make an awful lot of money. In fact, it barely breaks even. But what he has got is two card readers. Not one. One of them he leaves in the shop. And the other one, he has made up a device, well, you remember I was saying that the range was one centimetre? Well, it turns out that the card reader's RF field is actually quite powerful, and the only thing that restricts the range is the size of the antenna, which on the card reader is just a little patch like that, a couple of inches square. And what he's done is he's built a big coil, put it in the back of a jacket, so it covers the whole of his back. He's taken another smaller coil that then goes over the actual card reader's patch where it normally reads the card. And you've got a bit of electronics in between, which all it does, if you're technically minded, is impedance matching. It makes sure that both the coil that's on the card reader and the coil that's in the back of his jacket, the big one, actually seem to be the same electronically and they both resonate at the sort of frequency that the card readers use. So having done this, he then gets an Arduino, connects it over USB, just as if it was the till, and the Arduino sends in random charges of uh, very small charges in his case. He runs a news agent and what he's done is he's looked at his average um, what, it, what people average that they put on their card it varies between £5.50 down as low as 75 pence. So random selects one of these charges that match the charges that are going through his shop and that's the important bit. Because if someone looks at his account they don't suddenly see all these weird charges what they see is the normal business of his shop. Okay and somewhat higher volume than one might expect. And he then just goes wandering about. And as he wanders about, the Arduino puts a charge onto the machine, the machine charges someone's card, and he reckons that his big antenna works from half a metre. So he only has to get close to you. <laughs> he can just walk down the road, and even if your card is in your bag, if it's unprotected, then you're going to get charged. And as I said before, the chances are you won't notice it because it's only going to happen once. So he might charge 10,000 people a day and get £20,000 worth. But that would be overkill. And the credit card companies, when, when they actually looked at his account, might spot that as fraud. So he doesn't do that. He only works for about an hour or two hours a day and might take two or three thousand pounds. Um, which is a big boost on a shop where the daily turnover is something like £1,200. And it makes all the difference between having an extremely profitable business and one that barely ticks over. So that's how credit card fraud works. And that's how the more advanced scammers are doing it. And the cheap scammers can get caught very easily, as I've said. And uh, I think they often do. And quite recently, there was a picture on Facebook of someone waving a uh, card reader around someone's bottom on the tube um, in London, the subway. Um, and I'm sure that guy's going to get caught doing that. But this guy has actually been a bit more clever about it. Um, okay, he's a criminal, but hats off to him. He's done an awful lot of work to do what he's doing. So beware, the scammers are out there. And now I'm going to show you how to defeat them. It's actually very easy. I'm just going to go and get some stuff. The first thing you need to do is drink a can of beer. <laughs> no, you can use Coke can. But seriously, here's a beer can. You need a pair of scissors. And all you need to do penetrate your can, cut round. Now there are some people who will try and tell you that you can use aluminium foil. You can't. 
You cannot use aluminium foil because it's simply not thick enough. Um, this stuff is about three times the thickness of regular aluminium foil and it works. Regular aluminium foil, there are card readers that can read straight the way through. So, having cut the top off, get yourself a nice large sheet of material. There we go. Fold your beer can in half around your credit card. Like that. Now you don't need much of an overlap. You will have to flatten it in a minute. So there we are. Cards covered both sides. Cut along the top. Being careful not to cut into your credit card. Wouldn't want to do that, would we? And trim whichever edge is grottiest so that it's the same sort of size as your card. So what you end up with is your card. You can slip inside there. Then you can get your wallet and your card with its cover can go inside like that and then any time you want to use it you take your card out of your wallet you lose the convenience of being able to just take your wallet and go whack onto a reader however that's more than made up for by the fact that your card is safe it's also a good idea to trim these little corners off here as I found the first time I did this um, they can scratch your hands up so if you trim these corners into a bit of a circular shape then you'll be fine and this actually works it works very well um, you don't need to ground it it's the interference effect of having large lumps of aluminium each side makes the card respond in a different frequency range so it can now no longer respond to readers um, it's as simple as that as I said before, foil won't do it, beer cans will. I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Here's a few quick words before you go. Don't forget to check out other great videos on Arduinotronic and if you liked this video or found it interesting or useful, please like, share, and subscribe. See you soon.